on World News Tonight. Brink of war. Tension between the two Koreas escalate with both sides firing against each other. Continuing conflict. Russia's mass evacuation of occupied territory picks up the pace as Ukrainian forces close in. Breaking silence. Brazil's Bolsonaro addressed the nation despite refusing to concede to election winner Lula da Silva. And party pets. Furry friends take center stage in fabulous masquerade wear. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. North Korea fired missiles towards the south, which crossed the two countries' maritime border for the first time since the peninsula split. North Korea fired at least 17 missiles into the sea on Wednesday. Seoul says one of them landed less than 38 miles off South Korea's coast and, for the first time, crossed a disputed maritime border which is outside of South Korea's territorial waters. <laughs> The apparent missile tests triggered air raid signals on the South Korean island of Oolong. South Korean President Yoon Shuk Yul called it an effective act of territorial encroachment. Military chiefs in Seoul voiced alarm at the latest development. This North Korean missile launch, which marks the first time since the division of the peninsula that has landed near our territorial waters south of the northern limit line, is very rare and we can never tolerate it. Our military will firmly respond to it. In response, South Korea scrambled fighter jets that fired three air-to-ground missiles across the maritime border. Japan also condemned Pyongyang's missile tests on Wednesday. Its defence chief said a complaint was lodged with Beijing through diplomatic channels. Wednesday's launch comes after a warning from Pyongyang of powerful follow-up measures if the US and South Korea didn't stop large-scale joint air drills. Those went ahead with hundreds of warplanes, including F-35 stealth fighters from both sides, staging mock attacks 24 hours a day. According to Seoul, the training was needed to counter potential threats from North Korea, which has staged a record number of missile launches this year. In a statement on Wednesday, North Korea said the Allied drills were, quote, inordinate moves for military confrontation that created a grave situation on the Korean peninsula. Despite being ousted not long ago, former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems set to return in full force, with latest polls showing a considerable margin between the tallies for the two candidates. Former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seemed set to return to power after exit polls showed his right-wing bloc winning a narrow majority in Israel's parliamentary elections on Tuesday. Israeli television projected that the man known as Bibi, who was already the country's longest-serving prime minister when he was ousted last year, appeared to command 61 to 62 seats in Israel's 120-member Knesset. The contest was Israel's fifth parliamentary election in four years. Despite what some have dubbed election fatigue, voters turned out at levels reported to be the highest since 1999. The contest seems to end the brief premiership of Yair Lapid, who brokered the coalition that toppled Bibi in 2021. His centrist camp was projected to win 54 to 55 seats. He campaigned on his stewardship of Israel's economy and diplomatic advances with Lebanon and Turkey. But it appears that was not enough to stop a resurgent right. The contest was shaken up by ultra-nationalist firebrand Itamar Ben-Gvir and his religious Zionism list, now set to be the third largest party in parliament. Netanyahu has been counting on support from the far-right faction to put him back on top. A series of Palestinian militant attacks on Israeli civilians and soldiers focused voters' attention on security, and Netanyahu has long fashioned himself as among the most hawkish leaders in Israel's history. With Ukrainian efforts of retaking captured land continues to gather momentum, Russian forces are speeding up the process of evacuation on an even larger scale, a move Ukraine claims is a forced deportation. The streets of the Russian-held port of Kherson in southern Ukraine were virtually empty this week. Shops and businesses shuttered, with a few final people evacuating, boarding ferries with suitcases and beloved pets in hand. 
Russian installed officials there have evacuated tens of thousands of civilians in recent weeks as Ukrainian forces advanced to the north and east of the strategic city. And on Tuesday, Russia expanded the order, telling residents to leave a much larger region of Ukraine along the eastern bank of the Dnipro River. Ukraine says the evacuations include forced deportations from occupied territory, a war crime. But Russia, which claims to have annexed the area, says it is taking civilians to safety because of the risk Ukraine might use unconventional weapons. In a post on Telegram, Vladimir Saldo, the Russian-backed head of the region, told people they are in danger. There are reports that the Ukrainian troops may use the dirtiest methods of warfare, which will undoubtedly affect civilians. There is also reliable information that Kyiv is preparing a massive missile attack on the Kahovka Dam. Kyiv says the accusations that it would use such tactics on its own land are absurd and that Russia might be planning the actions itself. Some in the area, like this shopkeeper, have refused to flee. The region has become one of the most consequential front lines of the war, with thousands of Russian troops staged in the area. Ukraine's advance has slowed in recent days, with commanders citing wet and cold weather and tougher terrain. Russia fired a huge volley of missiles at Ukrainian cities on Monday in what Putin called retaliation for an attack on Russia's Black Sea fleet over the weekend. Ukraine said it shot most of those missiles down, but some had hit power stations, knocking out electricity and water supplies. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price on Tuesday condemned the attacks. With temperatures dropping, these Russian attacks aimed at exacerbating human suffering are particularly heinous. As Ukraine works to restore water and power to its citizens, the United States remains committed to the victory of a sovereign and independent Ukraine. And we are working to deliver air defense systems so Ukraine can continue to repel these attacks. Just north of Kherson, Russia fired four missiles into the Ukrainian port city of Mykolaiv overnight, demolishing half an apartment building. Rescue workers recover the body of an elderly woman from the rubble. A stalemate continues to be the status quo of the controversial grain deal revocations, which could effectively cut off supply of major grain imports and exports from Ukraine. Russian President Putin has told Turkey that they want concrete guarantees from Kyiv to continue. There is still no movement of cargo ships carrying Ukrainian grains on Wednesday. It leaves the future of the UN brokered deal, which ensures a safe wartime passage of critical food supplies, in doubt. On Tuesday, three ships carrying corn, wheat and sunflower meal did travel through the humanitarian sea corridor, despite the Russian withdrawal from the agreement. Russia's leader Vladimir Putin has told his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan in a phone call that Moscow will only consider resuming the deal if he secures real guarantees from Kyiv. Moscow suspended its participation due to Saturday's drone attack on Russia's fleet in Crimea, one that putting blames on Ukraine. Kyiv has not claimed responsibility and has denied using the safe shipping corridor for military purposes. This is literally a matter of life for tens of millions of people. In his nightly address, Ukraine's President Zelensky said the Grand Corridor needs reliable protection and that Russia should receive a tough international response for disrupting food exports. Earlier, Zelensky had welcomed the European Commissioner for Energy in Kyiv. Following Lula da Silva's narrow victory at the Brazil elections, Jair Bolsonaro maintained a heavy silence in response to his defeat. However, the outgoing president broke his silence today and concerningly did not concede his defeat in his message. Jair Bolsonaro has broken the silence he's maintained since losing Brazil's presidential elections on Sunday. But noticeably, he did not expressly concede his defeat. In a brief press conference, the outgoing president thanked the 58 million Brazilians who voted for him and did not once mention the name of the winner, Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva. He then spoke about protests going on in the country. The current popular movements are the result of indignation and the feeling of injustice of how the electoral process was carried out. 
Peaceful demonstrations will always be welcomed, but our methods cannot be like those of the left, which have always harmed the population. Bolsonaro's statement comes after two days of hundreds of blockades of highways and roads carried out by truck drivers who support the ousted far-right president. They're questioning the two-point victory of left-wing rival and former president Lula, as he's known. Streets have been blocked in Sao Paulo and elsewhere, and the apparent inaction of the police, who many suspect of sympathizing with Bolsonaro, has put the judiciary in the spotlight. On Tuesday, the Supreme Court ordered the Federal Highway Police to immediately clear the protests and warned of serious consequences if that doesn't happen. The police hit back, saying over 200 protests have been broken up. But the tensions haven't stopped Lula's supporters celebrating. World leaders were also quick to congratulate him, including the Argentinian president, Alberto Fernandez. Now, the victor and his supporters just want to see a peaceful handover of power. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. There is light at the end of the tunnel for the countless infections of RSV affecting thousands of children in the U.S. Pfizer's new experimental vaccine has proven effective in fighting against the virus. The search for an RSV vaccine has taken decades, but tonight Pfizer says new data for its experimental shot given to pregnant women early in the third trimester was 69% effective in preventing severe respiratory illnesses in newborns in their first six months of life. The company says it's even more effective in the first three months. It's a real breakthrough. I would say that people have been searching for a vaccine for uh, nearly six decades, at least five. Pfizer's data has not yet been peer-reviewed. The company says it plans to apply for vaccine approval before the end of this year, but shots in arms may not come until next winter. Irene Aaron in Baltimore knows the stakes. Two of her children with RSV have gone to the hospital in the past few weeks. As more hospitals brace for a triple threat of RSV, the flu, and new COVID variants this winter, Orange County, California has just declared a health emergency. And another concern is emerging. Across the U.S., some pharmacies are reporting shortages of one of the most widely used antibiotics, liquid amoxicillin. It's commonly prescribed to treat ear infections, pneumonia, and bronchitis in children. It's concerning because it's happening at a time of the year where the demand is increasing. The United States Chief Justice has put Donald Trump's tax fraud case on hold, preventing a further look at Trump's tax records. This was in response to a political bias accusation from Trump's legal team. The top judge in the U.S. says a House committee can't get their hands on former President Donald Trump's tax returns, at least for now. An order from Chief Justice John Roberts on Tuesday temporarily blocked the lawmaker's request so the Supreme Court can take a closer look at an emergency request from Trump. Wow, what a crap. Trump claims the Democratic-led Ways and Means Committee is politically motivated. A lower court has said the panel is justified in wanting to see the tax materials, but Trump's attorneys are preparing an appeal. The legal fight goes back to 2019 when the committee sued Trump. It invoked a law empowering the chairman to request anyone's tax returns. Trump was the first president in four decades not to release his tax returns, and he has fought vigorously to keep the details around his wealth and his Trump organization secret. His lawyers say the lower court decision would make presidents vulnerable to so-called invasive demands from political opponents and undermine the separation of powers in government. They say the committee wants to expose Trump's tax information just for the sake of exposure and dig up politically damaging information about him. House Democrats say they need to see if the Internal Revenue Service is properly auditing presidential returns and to figure out if new legislation is needed. Roberts ordered the committee to respond to Trump's bid by November 10th. That's two days after the midterm elections, where Trump's fellow Republicans are seeking to take control of Congress. Trump himself is mulling over another presidential run in 2024. Social media giant Twitter is now in the hands of billionaire Elon Musk, who made himself the CEO of the company following a drawn-out purchasing process. Musk is set to make fresh changes to key areas of the platform, such as verification. Elon Musk now runs five firms. The billionaire said Monday that he had made himself CEO of Twitter, the social network he just bought for $44 billion. 
Musk already ran Tesla, rocket firm SpaceX, brain chip startup Neuralink, and tunneling firm The Boring Company. He had already fired former Twitter boss Parag Agrawal and other top executives. Now he's also dissolved the board and is the sole director of the company. Twitter declined to say how long Musk would stay CEO or whether he planned to find a new chief. The man himself said in a tweet that dissolution of the board was just a temporary move, but didn't elaborate further. Musk has moved fast to put his stamp on the company. He has said he'll review how people are verified and may charge for use of the coveted blue tick awarded to some users. His teams have also been meeting with employees to investigate Twitter's software and figure out how it works. Though some staff said they'd had little communication from Musk and were using news reports to piece together what was happening. Analysts fear running five firms could prove too much though. Tesla stock is down around a third since Musk first said he planned to buy Twitter. That's far worse than the benchmark S&P 500 index. Denmark's centre-left bloc has secured the most votes in a general election, widely seen as a confidence vote in the country's leader. The leader of the bloc, Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen, will form a new government with a projected total of 90 seats. Denmark's Social Democrat Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen is set to stay in power after the country's left-wing bloc won a one-seat majority in Tuesday's general election. The very last votes counted in the Knife Edge poll that gives Frederiksen side 87 seats in mainland Denmark, but three more are expected from the autonomous overseas territories of Faroe Islands and Greenland. Dear Denmark, I am so happy and proud. The Social Democrats We have had the best election in more than 20 years. Before confirmation that Frederiksen's so-called red bloc or left-leaning parties had achieved the 90 seats needed for a majority in their 179-seat parliament, former Prime Minister Lars Hasmussen appeared set to become the kingmaker. His newly formed centrist party won 16 seats. Frederiksen's rival right-wing blue bloc ended up with 72 seats. Frederiksen says she will try to form a new government with broad support across the political divide. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The WHO said that monkeypox continues to represent a global health emergency. The UN agency said that the outbreak is still a public health emergency of international concern, which is the organization's highest level of alert. Zookeepers at Sydney's Taronga Zoo had a brief scare when five lions were spotted outside their main enclosure, though the zoo's director said they are now safely back on their own turf with no injuries involved. The man accused of breaking into House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's San Francisco home and clubbing her husband in the head with a hammer pleaded not guilty to attempted murder and other charges. The world's most powerful active rocket lifted off for the first time in more than three years from Florida's Cape Canaveral, with Elon Musk's SpaceX sending a group of satellites into orbit for the U.S. Space Force. Dozens of migrants were reported missing after an overloaded sailboat capsized and sank in rough seas off an island near Athens. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. We leave you tonight with visuals of dozens of cute party animals in costumes paraded across Harbourfront stage in Key West, Florida. Thank you and have a great night.